when my wife and I came out, we realized that that would be true, that people calling themselves Christians would have to be saying, yes, that's Christ. At the height of our whole journey, my wife suddenly had something happen. She was doing a massage, therapeutic massage business, and she had a really strange thing happen, and it, and it felt evil, except evil's not in our vocabulary. Evil does not exist in the New Age. Evil is, just, I mean, you're just seeing something that you are projecting from your own inner fears. So you always go inside yourself to fix whatever it is. You don't go to God because there's no evil. There's no framework there. So we did everything we could to deal with this situation, and, and it would periodically come back. It was associated with a man who had come in to, to the massage practice. So we were getting pretty desperate. We went to our New Age group leaders, the uh, Course of Miracles group leaders, and they had us get in a little circle and and um, do a little healing, and they sent love and light. And I was walking out the door, and I said, uh, isn't there anything else we can do? And his wife said, put on the full armor of God and stand fast against the wiles of the devil. And I, went, I went, wait a minute, what are you telling? And her husband's going, now, honey, you know, it's like, you know, let's not get carried away. She used to be an evangelical Christian, and she opted for the New Age. There's a lot of people in the New Age that used to be in the church. So we went home, read, read that scripture that night, and it just kind of went, oh, that was really sweet of Julie. She was really trying to help us. She must have been in how church background, and we dismissed it. Anyway, in the Christmas of 1983, we went down to where my wife's mom, she was my, Joy was my girlfriend at the time, where she lived in Manhattan Beach, and this presence would still manifest. And we were getting pretty desperate. And one day when my wife was off with a friend, I went to a little bookstore in Hermosa Beach called the Either Or Bookstore. And in the healing section, the New Age section, I saw a book called The Beautiful Side of Evil by Johanna Michelson. I picked the book down and I started reading it. And I'm like, yeah, this is just like what we've been through. And I'm reading the story. She was involved with a psychic surgeon. She had a spirit guide named Jesus. And I'm just kind of going, whoa, this is wild. And then she had a solution that was really remarkable, and I wrote it down. I was believing the scriptures that she was telling me, and I just uh, had no reason to disbelieve her at all. And as I was reading this and taking notes on the floor, because by the way, when you're in the New Age, you're too proud to buy a Christian book, because this was clearly a Christian book. I was going to take notes. I'm not going to buy that book. You know? So as I'm taking notes, this guy comes off the street, and he comes back into the bookstore. I recognized him because I've worked with a homeless. He was a homeless, mentally ill guy that was on the streets. He came back to where I was in the bookstore, and he said, are you going to buy that book? What are you doing with that book? And I just kind of like held the book to my chest, and I went, is it possible that evil is real and that it knows what I'm doing? Can they orchestrate some guy on the street to come back here? And that's exactly right. That's exactly right, because that book, the Lord used that book to save our lives. And you don't hear hardly any of that stuff these days. And there's more warfare going on now probably than there was then because we're not really contending for the faith. So the next day, I told Joy when this presence was manifesting again, it, it bothered her. It was I could tell because her face would get kind of fuzzy. I said, let's go out in your mom's backyard. I want to try something different. Don't be scared. And addressing the presence, I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to be gone. I forbid your presence here. I claim the blood of Jesus Christ upon us. Go to where Jesus sends you. It was like, whoosh. It was like, uh, so. Joy said, it's gone. What was that? I said, I'm not completely sure. <laughs> but it has something to do with a victory that Jesus won on the cross over evil and over Satan. I think we better start reading the Bible along with A Course in Miracles. This is how thick you are when you're in the New Age. You'd think you'd drop down to your knees and accept the Lord on the spot. It took us a little while, but we understood very quickly that the Bible was the authority, and it, it was like the morning newspaper. It laid everything out that we had just done. If you read the New Testament in light of what I just told you and what's going on in the world, there's warnings throughout, throughout, and to, to say that, you know, like, I'm a red-letter Christian, like, as if that, I mean, there's a lot of red-letter stuff, too. So we understood that there was a battle, and we would, we would go into the churches, and really it was the Calvaries in our area that had no problem with my testimony, but we would go into churches, and, you know, one of the gals, you know, little ladies would say, 
So, Mr. Smith, how'd you get saved? I said, well, you know, it's like we were in the New Age, and there was like this evil spirits and called on the name of Jesus, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, Romans 3. And she goes, oh, you know, the donuts are over there, and the coffee's over there. And it's like, you know. <laughs> and, and, and my wife and I would go home, and it was like, we're going, after 30 days in the faith, do, do we know more about spiritual warfare than some of these churches? And that wasn't a prideful thing. It was a, it was a horrifying thing to us, because we thought we would walk into the churches and we would be an encouragement. But we scared people. We became freaks. It was, you know, it was really Calvary Chapel in Oroville when we were, my wife and I were working at the homeless program that allowed us to bring the homeless to the church and, and Mike Warren just didn't have any problem with that. I mean, he, he read his Bible. He knew his Bible. And he, yeah, but you know, we, we added something to that because this is what's happening in the world. An encouragement to all of you just to stand fast. Um, there's nothing wrong with our expressing concern about various teachings. I think this is still a democracy. I think that some of the mockery and the ridicule that comes upon some of us when we talk about these things, I think we need to look at what's being said, not just the hyperbole and the caricatures that are being drawn. And all of you are being drawn as stereotypic hyper-fundamentalists because you happen to have the faith to believe in the Bible. Thanks a lot for having me, and God bless you guys. One day the sun is gone child One day the morning's gonna come One day those things that haunt your eyes child One day that pain will all be gone And one day not again, no suffering. And one day he'll roll away the night. When the morning comes, there'll be sunshine. When the dark is gone. Yeah.